glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. We have come to give God the glory. He has been so good to so good. So good. So good. Glory. 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 Give him all the glory. Glory. He has been so good to so good. So good. So good to me. Welcome to the Luke, St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. I'm Pastor Chapel. We delight that you have joined us for this virtual worship encounter during these pandemic times. I trust that you will encounter the Lord, that you will find yourself affirmed, that you will find your purpose anchored in the word. The Lord bless you. We thank you for joining us. We go now to worship. Welcome Kingdom Fellowship to today's worship experience. We praise God and we lift him with all our might. He's the God who is the great I am. There's nobody greater. Let's lift it together, adoration. Come on. You're the author of creation, the God of every nation. You're the holy, You're the holy. 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 Angels bow before you. Yes, you are. You are the great I am. Mighty King, you are the great I am. Come on, help us sing it. You're the author of creation, of creation, the God of every nation. You're the holy, holy, holy. angels bow before thee. Mighty King, you are the great I am.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. Good to worship with you this morning in this virtual way. Uh, the Lord bless us as we have gathered on this good day to be alive, as any day is good a good day to be alive. Uh, turn with me to the second book of the Hebrew canon. That is the second book of the Old Testament, the book of Exodus. Exodus, the 14th chapter, I'm going to be reading an extended passage. Uh, please give your patient attentiveness. attentiveness. Exodus, the 14th chapter, beginning with verse 10. You are familiar with this passage, this story in the life of Israel. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes. Israel is in the wilderness. They have just escaped Egypt. Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and Israel feared greatly. And the people of the Lord cried to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Sar sarcasm. Uh, what have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians, to be captives, than to die in the wilderness, to be independent and free. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which the Lord will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom ye see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Sarcasm from God. Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff. That's important to the preaching. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. You divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry land. And it will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after you. And I will get the glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his brothers uh, and his horsemen, he will know that I have gotten the glory. Then the angel of the Lord who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea. Learning when to press pause. Learning when to press pause. Let's pray. Gracious God, seize this moment, take it out of our hands and with your stirring up the anointing that you have already already placed on us. We pray, O oh God, that you would give us ears and hearts and minds to hear from you, even through human particularity. 
I know not why you choose humanity to speak to humanity, yet, Lord, there we have it. That's how you have chosen to do it. So, Lord, you have to be in this mix so that as we listen, we will listen with an ear toward heaven, despite the humanity that we all bring to this encounter. Speak, Lord. Our souls make this earnest plea. In thy son's name we pray. Amen and amen. Learning when to press pause. The Christ in Christian faith encourage us, encourages us to do, to be in motion. To move beyond where we discover ourselves at any moment. To be people with aspiration. The great Christian preacher and reformer Martin Luther said, If I rest, I rust. If I rest, I rust. In the great misread of the Bible, I repeat that, in the great misread of the Bible and the best of today's Christian understanding, people, when looking through the eyes of the Old Testament, the Hebrew canon, see and declare that God most wants praise. Praise is what I do. However, you will never find the first Christians, the early church caught up in a notion of praise in the way that you find it done in the Old Testament scriptures. Yes, praise is what I do, and you ought to have a praise. Every child of God ought to have a praise. Now, praise does not necessarily mean that you turn over benches, Praise can be a simple act of saying, Lord, I, I praise you. But in the culture of the uh, African-American church, praise is often envisioned as being vocal, uh, being demonstrative, um, having something to say, displaying my understanding uh, uh, by giving voice to what it is that I feel and what it is that I think. You cannot be a child of God and not have God do something for you and not accompany what God has done by giving God praise. Uh, you ought to have some praise. Ah, oh, but I want to caution the 21st century church, just because you give God praise in church, that doesn't mean that you have done the total of what is required of us once we leave a sanctuary uh, filled with praise. I want to provide a biblical corrective this morning. The Christian faith calls us to praise but it demands a service and progressive living. Did you get that? That's a subtle. That's a subtle understanding. It's a subtle uh, shift um, against what the way in which we traditionally understand what it means to be a child of God, what it means to be gathered as the church of God, what it means to fellowship with one another, especially on a Sunday in worship. I'm. Um, I'm going to provide a biblical corrective. I'm not saying you ought not have some praise. God knows one of the sweet and wonderful things about the African American uh, worship experience is that, uh, unless you're in a silk stocking boozy church, um, where um, um, uh, uh, who I am in culture and my station in life, it merits the way in which I worship God. I ain't got time for bougie worshiping Christians no more. Uh, forgive the code switching. Um, um, but if the Lord has done something for you and if what the Lord has done 
is impacting upon your circumstance and your situation, then I declare there's something up deep within me that will not allow me just to give God polite praise. I want to worship God. I want to let God know you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I want somebody to understand that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, uh, old school church used to do it this way, hold my mule. In other words, um, uh, you handle things while I give God his due praise for what the Lord has done for me. I am not saying you ought not have praise, but I just want to provide a biblical corrective. I think God would rather have our service than to have our praise. Uh, because as children of God under the banner of Jesus Christ, tell me how many times you find and discover in scripture where Jesus is doing all that praise. But then show me all of the times that you find God out, Jesus out Doing something on behalf of the kingdom. Doing something because he's been in prayer. Doing something because the Lord has spoken to him. Doing something because the Lord has uh, anointed him a fresh. Doing something because he understands that faith without works is dead. Um, so, yes, ask me what kind of church I'd want to have. I'd want to have a shouting, hand praising, clapping, stomp your foot, slave at the altar, slave in the, in the, in the aisles kind of church. But ask me what kind of church I want the church, a shouting church to be. When church service is over, I want it to be a serving church. I want it to be a laboring church. I want it to be the kind of church where God gets things done because God has a community of faith of people who he can touch to be his hands and his eyes and his feet and his joy and his long suffering and, and his forgiveness. Um, the word of the Lord in this instance shows that Abraham uh, packs his bags. That's, that's doing something. Um, gets his family, family ready for a camel ride and he moves from Haran to Canaan. That's doing something. Leaving something familiar. Uh, leaving uh, what has given you birth. Um, the word of the Lord shows that King Solomon, um, the Hebrew king, marshaled all of the resources of nature and builders and community to lead his own people toward doing something, building a temple. The word of the Lord shows uh, Mary uh, in her big sister Martha's house. And when we see uh, Mary, she moves, does something. She moves from the kitchen uh, to the feet of Jesus. In other words, she moves from where, get this ladies, uh, get this gentlemen, she moves from the place where society has put her, designates for her, demands that she stays. When she got glimpse of the Lord Jesus, she moved from where society wanted her to the feet of Jesus, which is where heaven said was her destiny. In the book of Acts, Jesus told the first Christians, and you will be witnesses unto me. He didn't say y'all be hanging out and getting appointments and getting your shout on just in Jerusalem. Jesus said to them, um, you will be witnesses unto me moving from Jerusalem, uh, you know the word, uh, to uh, Judea, you, you know the word, to Samaria, um, unto the uttermost parts of the world. Africa first. I had to provide that corrective for my African American brothers and sisters. Uh, he went to Africa first, long before he ever made it to Europe, um, to Africa and then Middle Europe. All I'm saying is that the Christian faith demands that we be doers. Yes, it demands that uh, we be doers. Um, I had a friend from Germany Christian friend from Germany and uh, they shared with me a quote one time and the quote says um, it costs the devil little to catch a 
lazy man. It cost the devil little to catch a lazy man. It's simply a way of saying that the Christian faith encourages us to do, to be in motion, to move beyond where I am at any moment, especially significant moments, uh, to be a person with aspirations. Yes, I'm, I'm bound for the promised land. Um, but what happens when it's time to press pause? When you're moving forward first requires that you stand still. Um, there are times um, when God has to get in the mix and shape things up so that we can move on. Uh, the Lord sometimes has to shake things up before we can move on. And when the Lord shakes things up, that's that's when that's when uh, that's when the Lord says, uh, "I got this." Have, have you ever had uh, 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 the Lord to to, to to situate you for an "I got this" moment? Um, that's a sweet and wonderful place to be when. When you can rely on God's soul, uh, that, that, that God says, I got this, uh, I got your back, I'm, I'm going to handle this one, um, uh, uh, step back, um, watch me work, uh, 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 or if the Lord says, uh, you haven't shouted in a while, I need to give you something to uh, shout about, nothing more precious uh, uh, than when the Lord um, has to set things up. When we have to uh, press pause in the midst of the Lord um, working it out and fleshing it out. Um, anybody who's lived a while, um, thank you ladies for this amazing metaphor. Um, uh, uh, um, as, as ladies know, um, especially those who have given birth to children, as, as ladies know, mm, sometimes that thing which is beautiful takes a long time to be birthed. Mm, yes, it does. Every now and then, um, the Christian faith does not, uh, as it were, abide by our desire to wave a wand in the name of Jesus. Um, uh, I guess it said this way in old school black church circles, it takes time to be holy. Um, you've got to go through some things and see some things. Um, you're going to have some high moments and you're going to have some low moments. But, but, but when you have the high moments and the low moments, you've got to learn how to do like Paul. You've got to be able to find your balance and find your anchor so that when things are on high, you can say, thank you, Lord, for things are on high. And when things are low, you can say, like you said, though he slay me, as it seems, um, yet will I trust him. I learned how to live a base and I learned how to be a bound. I learned how to find my center in the Lord. Um, um, yet, there are times when you have to learn how to press pause. Um, the Christian faith, yes, it does require us to do, to be in motion, to, to achieve, to be progressive, to move forward, to climb, to journey. But there are times when we are called to do like we see Israel in this passage. Israel is on her way. Mm. She's on her way to the land, get this, the land of promise, the land that flows with milk and honey. Um, milk for today and honey because it lasts, honey for tomorrow and the days ahead. God was looking out for, for his people. Israel is on the way. Um, yet, um, now, uh, as they are journeying this wilderness path on their escape, um, uh, from Egypt, it's, it's more uh, than an escape. Uh, escape is the wrong way to do it because the Lord hooked it up so they weren't escaping. Um, as the Lord situated them for a journey ahead like the Lord is doing some of you, what they discovered was that the journey ahead often has its trails. What uh, 
Israel discovered was that um, they journeyed and there was water in front of them now, the Reed Sea, we call it the Red Sea. Um, anybody who studies scripture understands why they call it the Red Sea, because the reeds in the sea, uh, they would turn red. And so um, the Red Sea stuck. Um, that, 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 that they could have just camped out there. If the water was just in front of them, they could have been, could have been a city by the sea. Call it seaside uh, community. Um, but, but, but what happened was that Israel, um, they had their backs pressed against the wall because Pharaoh, um, the leader of those whom they had just escaped, uh, Pharaoh decided, I'm not going to let them go. We need their slave labor. Don't you ever be surprised, black America, uh, that uh, racializing America always seeks to reaffirm the way in which it originally started. Uh, uh, we're going to let you go. But now that we have set you free, we want to keep you in bondage. Fight the powers. Keep on fighting. Um, Israel saw uh, that Pharaoh was barreling down behind them and the Red Sea was in front of them and now they are trapped. Um, to use a, a, a colloquialism from hip-hop culture, uh, what is we going to do? Um, uh, how are we going to move forward? If, 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 if our faith has defined for us a moment where we are to be progressive and to uh, move forward, um, if, 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 if the Lord has situated you and opened up some doors for you and whispered to you that the Lord is getting ready to send you to your promised land, a land that flows for your today and to your and for your tomorrow. And now you've run into an obstacle. What is you going to do? I believe that there is a lesson here. Um, and this lesson helps us to understand um, there are times when you have to learn how to press pause. When you've got to say, time out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping. Um, 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 uh, uh, we just need to uh, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Um, but this is what I want to add. Um, you first have to go as far as you and wait on the Lord. Uh, that's, a, that's a faith fact, uh, a faith principle. You first have to go as far as you know to go under your own steam and ingenuity and wisdom in conversation with God before you press pause and say, now, Lord, is your time to take over. Look at the passage of scripture. At the place where we discover Moses and Israel, they are standing in panic. Israel stands looking ahead and there is nothing but water, the Red Sea. No ferry, no surfboards, no jet skis for 600,000 men plus all the other folk who are there. No kayaks, no yachts, no cruise ships to whisk them safely to their next destination. Uh, in effect, they are stuck with nothing but water in front of them. But they don't want to turn around and go back to the place where they were just enslaved. And so now they hear the roaring sound and uh, thundering hoofbeats of chariots and horses belonging to an angry brute of a king named Pharaoh, an Egyptian Pharaoh, who is riding his army into the ground as he has determined to re-enslave the slaves that have just been set free. Uh, Pharaoh's eyes are red, his nostrils flare like an angry bull. And Moses and Israel with the Red Sea in front of them and Pharaoh and his army behind them, they are panicking. Um, knees knocking, hearts pounding, blood pressure shot through the roof. It's one of those master, the tempest is raging 
kind of moments. Uh, anything that they heard about God or from God or anything that they had read from their sacred scrolls uh, in this panic, they had forgotten about. Um, I want to minister to someone today. Um, you know what Israel's panic feels like. Your faith has become weak in the knees too. You know what scripture says. You've got Isaiah 40, 31 marked up in your King James Bible in old school yellow, in your NIV in hot orange, in your message Bible in astral bright blue. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings uh, like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Come on and finish this. I shall walk and not faint. But the word of the Lord right now can't convince you that this no way out situation has a way out and there you are panicking um, um as a matter of fact um this is when you have to have faith um it's easy to shout when everything is going well uh, that's old school church um um it's easy uh, to have pep in your step when uh the lord has orchestrated so that life goes your way mm. Uh, but, but get ready. Um, you can always stay on top of the mountain. Life is such that no matter who you are, where you are, what you have, how you cushion yourself, you will spend time panicking where Israel is. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I, I've done the best that I can. Israel panicking. Um, and it's no accident. That uh, when you start to panic, you do like Israel. Um, um, I used to be a church consultant in another professional religious life. And um, I was always amazed uh, when God's people started spitting at leadership. When leadership uh, did what it's supposed to do. Take you into risky places. As the Lord has said, this is where I want you to go. Um. Usually, you, you can tell the maturity of a congregation um, by how uh, they assess risk. Um, I wish that churches um, did like corporate the corporate world and the academic world. I wish that the church could just take a class in risk management. Because a lot of how God um, does what God does is done by taking risk. Um, no risk, um, no progressiveness. No risk. No moving beyond where you are. And some folk don't want to go anywhere and they're in church on boards. I'm not talking about St. Luke. Don't even go there. Uh, I'm talking about church culture in general. It's hard to take a church somewhere because you have folk doing like Israel. Moses, we told you we didn't want to go. We'd rather die here back in Egypt where it was comfortable and where we had a certain rhythm to life. We'd rather go back and die there than to move forward in the Lord. Um, remember now, Moses was taking them where the Lord had fashioned that they should go. Uh, being... Um, on this wilderness route headed toward the promised land. That wasn't something that came up in Moses' mind because he was a Pharaoh in training and knew something about topology and, and knew something about astrology and, 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 and knew something about geography. So he devised that this was the best way to go to get to the land of promise. God gave them the land of promise and then God gave them the route to take to get to the land of promise. And here Israel is. Watch this. Watch this. Here Israel is. Sitting on the blessings of God. And blaming somebody else. When God told the somebody else. This is what I, I want to do with you. Um, it ain't no mistake. That uh, in order to get some places. Um, to be progressive. To be in motion. You've got to do some things that are are risky. You got to you got to do some things that are, are risky. Why have you brought us out of Egypt? And then Moses turned to the Lord. The Lord said 
something to Moses that I'm sure was painful. But in order to hear it, you've got to come back to the preaching next week. Um, where are you in life? Um, are you on your way somewhere? Are you being progressive? Progressive by intuition? Progressive by circumstance? Progressive moving forward simply uh, because God has either whispered it in your heart, your spirit, or God has situated you so that you move forward. Now, as you're on your way, you've gotten to your Red Sea in front of you and Pharaoh behind you moment. You don't know what to do. What you're learning is how to press pause. Yes, how to press pause. It ain't always, so forgive the code switch, switching. It ain't always about us doing stuff, even though we have to do stuff. Every now and then, you have to learn how to press pause. Is the Lord whispering to you that it's time to press pause? Come back next week so you can understand some things about uh, what is required when you press pause. Um, but you are required to press pause. Um, we would be pleased, I would be pleased to journey with you. Uh, there is a prayer to follow. Pray that prayer. There is a number to call. Call that number. And we will gladly, I will gladly journey with you from victory unto victory. And now, wherever you go, may the peace of God be within you. May the courage of God push you. May the daring of God situate you. May the love of God throw its arms around you and love you. Now and forevermore. Come on and say it with me. Amen. What a delight it is for the people of God to have time to worship and to fellowship together. Are you aware that when the first Christians, as depicted in the book of Acts, when the first Christians gather together, they gather together first for worship. We are delighted that you joined us. During these times and in the life of our congregation, we invite you to share your giving with us it helps to support our congregational life and the varied ministries and responsibilities that we have. There are a number of ways that you can give, uh, and we ask that you would simply follow us to the end of this virtual worship encounter, and you will see the many ways that you can give. The Lord bless you, the Lord anchor you in a good week, and the Lord we have come to give God the glory Give God the glory Give God the glory We have come to give God the glory He has been so good to So good So good So good Glory Glory, glory, give him all the glory, glory, he has been so good too, so good, so good, so good to me.